Hello everybody, welcome to a quick build section at Monster Hobbies. And today we're going to be looking at this Herman Munster kit. Actually, he's not a kit, he's part of a kit. And that kit would be the original Munster's Living Room set by Aurora Polar Lights and Round 2's version of Polar Lights. You can actually get this in Glow in the Dark. And we will be hosting our Monster Hobbies Build a Monster Contest Saturday, October 28th, 2017, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can enter in the store or online if you contact us on Facebook. And it's five bucks entry per model in all of these categories here. Okay, so we got our little Herman Munster here. Lily. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm going to clip him off the parts tree, sprue runners, plastic junk, whatever you want to call this stuff, you know. There's his legs sitting down. Now Herman is supposed to be sitting in an electric chair watching TV. But I actually got this Herman from one of my modeling friends a long time ago because I was looking to put these. This is 1 16th scale. And I was actually looking to put Herman into a model of a 57 Chevy, but never really got around to doing that. So here he is now. And I think the reason why I have this one is because when my friend... Okay, you're not supposed to do this, but I did it. I did it. I twisted them off the sprue. Okay. Anyway. Um, I think the reason why I have this one is because my friend's version is the glow-in-the-dark, and it's probably a fully glow-in-the-dark Herman. So this would be a spare one. So he would glue together just like this. And I'm going to leave that attachment point on because I can sand this all down as a unit and get the seam line as well. And the detail's really nice on Herman. Face looks about pretty close to Fred Gwynn, the original actor. Okay, so you got pins and you got holes. So what I kind of like to do is just lightly sand here make this a little flatter when you glue the points or the, the plastic together. It is a bit shaped so just kind of be careful. Should try to do this on the other side. It's a double-sided sandpaper block in case you're wondering. Okay, so I've got Games Workshop Citadel glue. This stuff I sell in the store. Comes with this metal straw. It always gets a bit gluey. And I just started using this. This is my first bottle of this, even though I've been selling Games Workshop for years. I just uh, always use testers, which I'll still carry. But I find this kind of nice because that little straw just gets out enough glue. And this glue sets up relatively quickly too. A little bit hard for me to see when I've got sitting a foot and a half behind my work. Okay. So just oops. Slippy fingers. Try to position that a little at the bottom. Okay. 
Okay, so there's that part. I'll set that up, up there to dry. Now, those are parts of his arms, so let's do it. This is what they call a dry fit because there's no glue involved. So just dry fit these legs. It seems to go together a lot better than what the ABS, if you watched my just previous video. Um, the other Munsters kit, the full living room one that I have, was molded in ABS plastic. I, uh, what do you call it? Polar Lights, when they first came out, used ABS. This was like their first kit they, they produced when they were, just before they were bought by round two. So they produced Munster's living room out of ABS, and the ABS, well, first off, it's the plastic in your housing pipes, right? <laughs> but uh, the ABS, it was a softer plastic, and they're trying to get a deeper um, detail kind of out of the mold, because the ABS would go in there and pick up more detail, apparently. But it was harder to use plastic medium and a lot of people didn't like it so the round two has redone this in its original styrene which is easier to glue I don't know if I have to go up there or not oh, it doesn't look like it okay okay when you build your model kit, you don't want to be straddling a camera tripod, like I am. Which, of course, you can't see because that's off camera. Okay. Yeah, like all glues, be careful you don't get it on your fingers and smudge it into the side of the model. Because that's always not good. Yep, I didn't have to go up there, so that was good. Okay. It almost looks like he's got bell bottoms. <laughs> okay. So legs go up there. Then we got his arms. So we got eight minutes in. Okay. So this arm piece goes with the other one. This one goes here. You can see quite a bit of gap around there and there. Maybe not. Maybe it can be corrected. Okay, let's start with this angle here. He's a bit of an aggressive side here. Trying to sand at the exact same angle, but just to smooth out any imperfections there. I'll try to flatten it out. A little bit. <sighs> kind of doing this as quick as I can. I don't have the feature on my videos where you can just speed up the time. <sighs> Make my hands all go like. Oh yeah, I've left it on the floor. Okay. Make my hands go all <laughs> like this and kind of thing. I don't have that feature. <sighs> and I'm not going to try to build that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Just so it looks like I got that feature. <laughs> oh, I got it like this too. Hi, welcome to Master Hobbies. It's going really fast. Hello, Micro Machine Man here. Get all the Micro Machines can. <laughs> Whatever. Alright. Quick dry fit. Or I could go really slow like... Oh, no, I won't do that. I torture you guys. Uh, okay. So we'll just 
do the glue. Okay, there it goes. The thing that's also kind of nice about this Citadel glue is it seems like it's I'm not really squeezing the bottle. It's almost like it's just coming out on its own. overload there. Don't know if you can pick that up. Ah, slip, slip. Okay. Okay, leave that one to dry. And our final hand, arm. I probably should take, let's take that off. Where it attached to the parts tree. Gotta drop it on the floor too. Well, let's just do this. Okay, quick recovery. And there's the arm off the floor. <laughs> 12 minutes so far. Not too bad. Just smooth this out a little. Come on. Once you picked your model up off the grass, you're ready to add more glue to it. I don't like to build on my grass mats, but if I built on the white table, you wouldn't see what I was doing. a gap up there. Quite substantial. I don't have any filler here either, so you just have to go with it as it is, I guess. Okay. But keep in mind, this mold is from the 60s, and it's probably had about a billion pounds of plastic pumped through it over the decades that it's been around. And here's the boots, or his shoes. Now, the, speaking of things that you don't think are as old as they are, until you realize how old they are, guess what? My daughters and I were watching The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, and everything was going good until I figured that I'd check the date on the box of the DVD. And, okay, so these shoes have holes there. And guess what? Great Pumpkin is over 50 years old. <laughs> You're old. <laughs> uh, and it's hard to believe it, too. I mean, that's a classic, but it came out in like, uh, what was it, 1964, 68, somewhere in there. And that's already... Unbelievable. We are getting old as a generation. But actually, funny to think that the Great Pumpkin probably came out around this time that the Munsters and that was out too. 
which I should actually look it up for sure. Well, you can look it up. You're watching this on the internet. Open up a Google window. Google it. Or you could ask Jeeves, because no one asks Jeeves anything anymore. And apparently, Ask Jeeves is still around. Can you believe that? And, and for you guys that don't know what that is, when search engines started back in the old days of the internet, 10 million years ago, there used to be only Ask Jeeves. And he was like the internet butler. And you could ask Jeeves anything. And then one day, Google came in. And now everybody is Googling it. And they forgot to ask Jeeves. So you have to show Jeeves a little bit of love out there one day and just do a Ask Jeeves search for old time's sake. <laughs> uh, I think I, you could ask Jeeves about MySpace. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I joke now, but one day there won't be a YouTube. It'll be something else. So, ha ha on me. Okay, we line up his little shoe there. And then we, we're one step away from doing that Charlie Chaplin shoe gag. <sighs> That's for you really old timers that are tuning in. Or again, just Google Charlie Chaplin. Hey, there's a lot of cool things you could Google from the past. You could Google Charlie Chaplin, Laurel and Hardy, um, Fatty Arbuckle, all those old time comedians, the silent film era. You could Google the monsters, or you could Google mon monster hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Ooh, shameless plug for my store. Okay, line up, little booty. Hyman's little booty. <laughs> oh my. Okay, so here's the Chaplin shoe gag. Let's see if I. This won't look as good as Chaplin did it, but. Chaplin was using bread rolls. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so I have no imitation for the Great Chaplain, but there are the Herman Munster feet. And I got it all glued together in 17 minutes. Take note, parents. This is like level one being completed of a video game. <laughs> I don't know. So Herman would go together like this. But we're not going to use all the big seam lines and mold marks. We have to actually sand him down. But I'm going to let the glue dry because if you don't let the glue dry and you start sanding, you could actually make things, push things apart and get things out of alignment and make a big mess. So this concludes part one of gluing Herman together. Stay tuned for part two, where we will address seam lines and issues. And remember that we want to see your model kit entry and the Monster Hobbies Build a Monster contest. Coming up Saturday, October 28th, 2017, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Enter online if you wish. If you dare. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll see your stuff there and it'll be cool. And I can post it on Facebook and everybody can look at it and go, oh, that's a really cool model. And you get bragging rights. And then I will mail out certificates for first, second and third place and uh, other stuff. Anyway, we'll talk to you later and have a good one. Bye.